I know what I'm about to say sounds like common sense, but what the hell? Shanks is a bloody monster. And if you're an unfortunate fan of Kid, well then it's bad news for you, but he'll get his moment in the anime soon, so I guess tune in for that and cherish it, because you've got a rough time coming. The recent chapter of One Piece just dropped, and although the events of Egghead Island has been exciting enough with the traitor being finally revealed and that development progressing to its final chaotic stage, I'm sure what most people are going to talk about for a while is the other thing that's currently happening in this arc, and that's the circumstances involving the red hair pirates. After we were teased with Shanks and his crew's appearance at the end of Wano, driving off Admiral Rikogu, seemingly only to promote Film Red, the last we saw of them was when they were preparing to defend Elbaf against the incoming Kid Pirates. And the face-off between these two one-armed, red-headed men seemed to promise one legendary clash. After all, Kid was just coming off a big win against another Yonko, Big Mom, boasting a whopping 3 million berry bounty and a bravado to match. And well, this event did prove to be legendary, but it was only legendary for just one man. Because Shanks served a brutally one-sided beatdown to decisively eradicate the kid pirates. And I just have to say, I will never, ever, ever again question what Shanks and his crew are capable of. Being the first pirates to officially appear in the manga, the redhead pirates had only made a handful of appearances throughout the series, but nevertheless, these these limited appearances had all been memorable to us viewers. And although we hadn't seen them involved in extended action scenes, they were still considered one of the most powerful crews in the series. A Yonko crew led by a man who is considered one of the strongest characters, an emperor with the impressive history of having been the apprentice in the late Pirate King ship. Every mention and appearance of Shanks in the Red Hair Pirates has been filled with hype. From their history of successfully raiding and defeating powerful CP9 members to acquire a legendary devil fruit to stopping a war with just me words. Not to mention their second in command being enough to stop an admiral in his trap. I mean most of their top officers wear capes and nothing screams more badass than a character who wears a cape. But the truth is though, the red hair pirates had been hyped up really despite not doing all that much. That is until now. The way they handled the kid pirates in the recent chapter is perhaps the most impressive feat with which when it comes to top combatants facing off. And while there is an argument to be had about just how strong Kid actually is, we can't deny that he was monumental in taking down the Kaido and Big Mom alliance. He put in some work alongside his worst generation contemporaries. However, it is clear that he is still not ready to face an actual Yonko head-on without such alliance. Shanks absolutely destroyed Kid, with Killer also taking a blow merely because he was in the way. This destruction was so fearsome that Kid's crew immediately gave up the fight, begging Shanks not to kill their captain and offering him all their copies of their old Poneglyph rubbings. It honestly feels like whatever build-up Kid received back in Wano was just to use him to show us how badass Shanks really is in this following arc. Sort of like how Sanji was being used in the early days of the post-time skip era. Although Sanji's never taken an L this bad. But I guess Oda didn't completely downplay Kid. I don't know, I'm trying to find something something positive here, because Kid did pull out his biggest attack, and based on what we saw, he could have caused some real damage if it wasn't for just how insane Shanks is. But unlucky for him, because Shanks is indeed capable of some crazy future sight, to have been able to see what would have been the result of Kid successfully making his attack, and seeing as this is what caused Shanks to dial up the action, amounting to him recognizing Kid's threat, I guess that's gotta count for something. After all, Kid is the first person we've witnessed Shanks use a named attack attack against. And not just any attack either, Kamusari, the same attack that Roger used against Odin. And this brings up an interesting question. Was Shanks' attack just that much stronger than his former captains, the late Pirate King? Because although Roger did impressively send Odin flying, it wasn't the same sort of achievement that Shanks just displayed against Kid with a single shot. Although I have to say, it's probably more of a statement of the comparative strength between Odin and Kid, more so than about Roger and Shanks. I mean, I was happily in the minority, defending Kid all throughout Wano, but this is gonna be hard to bounce back from. I'm still interested in what's next for him and his crew, because hopefully this isn't the last we'll see of him in the story. No, he's not dead, this is One Piece after all. And although the narrator did claim that they were eradicated, this is the same sort of line that was used for Luffy and the Straw Hats at the end of Saobori. And like I said, I think there has to be some acknowledgement about how much concern he caused Shanks, causing the Yonko to come at him so 
strongly. Kid's crew, on the other hand, just very underwhelming. Seeing how useless they've really been, I actually have newfound respect for Kid. For someone who was portrayed to be a ruthless killer with the mentality that only the strong survive, he and Killer must have really carried the rest of the crew. And given the very little bit of sweet history that we know between these two, I think Kid's a lot more sentimental and loyal than meets the eye. So despite his pretty embarrassing loss here, I'm really not ready to let go. He also has one of the coolest devil fruits. And if he could just work on advancing all of his haki, the guy has so much potential. Maybe the red hair pirates can absorb his crew and make Kid an officer. I mean, aesthetically speaking, he fits right in. Although I highly doubt this will happen considering what we know of Kid's character. But then again, Zoro did beg the man that he must one day defeat in order for himself to get stronger so that, well, to defeat his trainer? So maybe Kid can do the same. Remember in the early chapters when Beckman told Higuma that if the mountain bandits want to beat the red hair pirates, they're gonna need to bring a warship. Well, we already knew what that meant back then, but now we know why. We've also been told that they're the most balanced and impregnable crew in One Piece, and they have the highest average bounties out of all the other crews, meaning that the top officers are probably not that far off from each other, and possibly from the chief himself. And the level of this crew gets even more impressive when we consider that unlike all the other Yonko crews, none of these members have devil fruits. Whereas all the other Yonko crews are hungry and searching for devil fruits, building armies out of them. Shanks and his crew are literally just roaming the seas, drinking their alcohol, and partying with pals. And so I think the lesson here is that alcohol is more nutritious than fruit. Okay, no, I don't mean that. Please kids, eat your vegetables, eat your fruits, and your milk. And if Luffy is anything to go by, by all means, eat your meat. Seriously though, with the way it's going, it seems that Oda's plan is to show us the undeniable force of the pre-existing Yonko. I mean, yeah, yeah, Kaido and Big Mom were taken down in the last arc, but the new generation can't get too cocky just yet. Hence why we see a ship flying Blackbeard's Jolly Roger ominously approach Egghead. My guesses are Law also lost to Blackbeard, and so the Commodore is now on his way to show the last remaining supernova captain that the Yonko don't gain their titles for no reason. Or more likely to get new devil fruit powers, even if it is by way of green blood and not the fruit itself. Either way, my heart pangs because this would mean that Law got off screen. But pushing that thought to the side, I can't believe how incredibly deliciously messy things are getting, given we know that Kizaru and Saturn are also on the way. Shanks keeping a tab on Blackbeard has me thinking we're getting closer and closer for their fateful face off too. Will we see new alliances or just a good old fashioned shitstorm? Not to mention whatever in the hell that York is brewing. I'm telling you, no truer words have been said than hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Or in this case, like a woman who's been forced to take literally everyone's shit. And who could blame her? She has spent a third of her life in the toilet. That's gotta affect your psyche. Speaking of which, I know I haven't made videos in a while. I've just been overwhelmingly busy with stuff. And that happens. But things are starting to ease up now, so hopefully I can find some sort of consistency again. I do have some stuff I still gotta take care of, but this chapter just got me so hyped that I knew I just had to talk about it. Overall, I've been really enjoying the Egghead arc, but this one took things to another level. It's one of those moments we've been waiting to see for a long time, and it finally happens, and it did not disappoint, at the same time leaving us wanting more. And given Shanks seems to have seriously entered the game in this final stretch now, perhaps we will be seeing more of Shanks, and in an extended combat too. Maybe even sooner than we think. Anyways, thanks for listening to me rant as usual. Let me know what you guys think about the chapter, and maybe drop some video ideas and topics you want to hear me rant about. Otherwise, thanks for listening.